Hey guys, Abraham Mohazy here with KUSI Prep Pigskin Reports, Pigs from the Past. We have a very special guest today with Pierre Cormier uh, from Madison High School, University of Arizona, now one of San Diego State's coaching uh, coaches on the coaching staff. Uh, Pierre, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going good. How about yourself? Good, man. Good. Uh, really appreciate you joining us today, man. Uh, I was really excited. Uh, to have you on the show. So just really wanted to say thank you and uh, look forward to diving into your story, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure, man. So of course you were a, a Madison uh, alumni, uh, a Warhawk. Um, can you tell us about, you know, your time at, at Madison High School? Yeah, my time there was good. You know, I uh, came into high school uh, uh, not with high expectations uh, for myself. Uh, uh, from a coaching standpoint, I was pushed from day one, um, and all those coaches that are there, I still keep in contact with all of them. But it was an it was an exciting time, and you know, for me as a, as a player, I, you know, I slowly developed uh, year by year, and, and things kind of started happening for me pretty fast after my junior year, just getting a lot of attention from schools around the country, which was exciting. Um, and, and then you know, I was able to. Uh, help my team win, win a state championship as, as a senior. So, you know, my time there was real exciting. It was a school I uh, anticipated going to uh, since I was, I think, in seventh or eighth grade. So it all, it all worked out and uh, finishing it with a state championship my senior year was probably the best way to, to go out. So look back on that real exciting time. And it's always going to be a part of a part of me for the rest of my life. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And of course, you know, your name, you know, it, it went a long way in San Diego, especially when you go and win a state title and a lot of uh, recognition coming your way. Um, what was it like, you know, when, you know, being a high school athlete and then seeing yourself on TV, like when you're on PPR, do you remember those feelings when you were actually like seeing yourself on PPR Friday nights after those football games? Yeah, I remember, you know, as a freshman, sophomore, because I was, you know, played freshman in JV, and I used to watch PPR and just see all the, you know, all the talented guys on there and just, uh, you know, imagine myself on there one day. And my junior year when I started to get those opportunities to do that, it was it was really cool to see it. And, you know, the biggest thing was just not letting it get to my head, you know, and, and just trying to avoid people trying to tell me how good I was the whole time and all that. And for a little bit, I did, you know, and, and <laughs> I was humbled real quick and, and, and got out of it and uh, was able to finish uh, my, my career strong. But it, it was it was uh, it was it was a fun and exciting time. And I say all the time, PPR does a great job covering uh, San Diego high school football. And and, uh, you know, I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for the coverage of uh, them and, and my team during that time as well. And you were also a silver pigskin finalist. You know, that's one of the, the top guys, you know, here in San Diego. Um, do you remember the, you know, the gala and, and, and being a finalist? Do you remember what that experience was like for you? Yeah, I do. I remember getting able to meet, uh, you know, a couple of, I knew a couple of those guys already, um, but I remember being able to meet uh, a few of the other finalists and it was a good experience. You know, looking back on it, it's kind of a blur. You know, and you're, you're up on stage and, you know, there's a bunch of people and, um, you know, but it was a big honor, definitely. Uh, and I think, you know, you look back on it and it's really a reflection of, uh, you know, the coaches who I played for and my teammates at the time. And, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, thankful I was able to put the appropriate work in to get that opportunity. But, you know, that's like the, you know, the, the high school foot, you know, the San Diego high school football Heisman finalist. So it was it was a really, really fun experience looking back on it. That's really cool, man. And and even right after that, you know, um, you decided to go off to college and you chose to go to University of Arizona. Um, what colleges were looking at you and, and why did you choose University of Arizona? Yeah, so it was a uh, I had a really good relationship with the uh, offensive coordinator there at the time, Rod Smith and, and the head coach, Rich Rodriguez. And so that 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 definitely helped me in going there and just feeling comfortable with, you know, people who I was going to be around for such a long time. Um, if I hadn't gone there, it was going to be UCLA um, uh, or Washington. But uh, I chose Arizona at the time, mainly just because of my relationships that I had with those coaches. Um, and it just felt like, you know, at the time they, you know, they had my best interests and you know, it's funny now going through the process and I'm on, you know, or, you know, going through the recruiting process now and I'm on the other end of it. You know, right. so 
talking to kids and, and hearing kind of what they're looking for and all that is, is, is kind of interesting. But um, at the time, I think it was a great decision. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely don't regret it. That's really cool, man. Um, and, you know, when you said it, you know, kind of being on both sides, what, what is that like for you now? You know, because you were a kid being highly recruited. Um, does that help in your recruiting when you're recruiting some of these top athletes? I think it does, but it's 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 so different now, you know, and, and recruiting, it, it's changing almost every year or so, maybe every other year. But uh, I definitely do think that experience helps, uh, you know, when, when you've gone through it. I think uh, uh, I can definitely use that uh, to my advantage uh, in terms of just understanding a kid, understanding what he's looking for. But the reality is every kid's different, you know, and and uh, uh, but I am able to use that. And, it, and like I said, it does help. Uh, but for me, it's just keeping up to speed with how things are changing now because, you know, there's a lot of factors that play in the kids' decision making in terms of where they're going to school nowadays. Right. Um, now, to back up uh, uh, your, your playing uh, career over at University of Arizona, could you give us, you know, um, a little bit about how that went for you and, 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 you know, what you went through there at University of Arizona? Yeah. So I came in and uh, there was you know, high expectations. Uh, and I came in and uh, I redshirted. I had a, uh, there was a running back named Kadeem Carey, a really good player, a really good person. Um, and he he was the guy, he was getting 40 carries a game. So they were like, hey, you know, hey, so the side red shirt in the weight room, all that stuff. And uh, so I was able to do that, get in the weight room and, uh, and all that. And then once the season progressed and finished you know we got into spring ball and it was time to compete for a starting job uh, we go into spring ball and I get off to a real slow start you know and, and uh you know the coaches are you know my offensive coordinator who I just mentioned previously pulls me to the side like you know man what's going on with you and I just told him coach I don't know you know and he goes go watch your high school highlight tape you know he goes he goes I think you need to remind yourself like like what kind of player you were so I did that come back after a spring break and I'm doing a good job going to spring ball. Everything's moving in the right direction. I'm starting to look like what they re recruited me to be. So it was good to, you know, for that stuff to happen. And then talking to the coaches after they were excited about me going into fall camp at the time. So I was doing a good job putting myself in position to, you know, be the running back at, uh, at Arizona and uh, just uh, had a medical situation that occurred uh, a week after our spring game. Uh, and it was, you know, super random and, uh, it was at the time, you know, heartbreaking, but, uh, you know, you look back on it and everything happens for a reason. So, you know, I, I always remind myself of that stuff. Anytime I'm going through a tough time, just cause, you know, I always think if I can overcome that, I can overcome anything. Man, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, I, I know what that's like, you know, being a college athlete, putting it all out there and, you know. Um, due to it, well, yours was a more of a, a, a medical um, situation. Uh, I actually just I had multiple ACL tears and just couldn't couldn't. It kept dragging on for me throughout college, and I know for me mentally, it was very hard. You know, because I just kept wanting to come back, kept wanting to come back. You know, and then getting re injured again, and it was just like mentally exhausting and draining. How did you mentally like overcome that? You know, being a young athlete at the top of your game and then, you know, not being able to play. Uh, Cause I know for me, I took it really hard. It took me, you know, a while to even like get out of that. You know, as an athlete, we have that competitive edge in us, you know, we, we, we go as hard, you know, balls to the wall, you know, trying to get there. Um, how was it for you? What was that process like? Yeah, that was tough. You know, 19 years old, you know, and you, you don't realize how young that is till, you know, you start to get older and 26 now. And then you look back and like, man, I was just a kid. But I think the first thing is, is it took time. Like you said, it took for you to, it took, it, it took a few years. And I think the first thing was I had support from my family. You know, you start with my mom, uh, my grandma, um, definitely were there emotionally to support me because that's, you know, tough to deal with. And, the biggest thing they wanted was just for me to be healthy, you know, but they knew I still wanted to play. So we were pushing for the doctors and, and all that stuff to, to get a, uh, a second or third opinion. And obviously it didn't work out that way. The second was I had, you know, a couple of previous coaches who, who continued to talk to me, support me and help me through that process. And, you know, I just, uh, 
I, I just needed something to, you know, something to help uplift me during that time. And the biggest thing was just, you know, finding those few people who, who still believed in me, still supported me. And, and, you know, ultimately it just took time, you know, and, and, you know, as, as an athlete, you know, you're so, you know, you're so used to trying to prove people wrong all the time. And, you know, the one thing I learned during that time is it's not always about proving people wrong. It's you want to prove some people right too, you know, and those are the people who support you. And, and uh, over time it started to, to, come to light that those were the people who, who were with me regardless, you know, my family and, and you know, a few other close people. And uh, over a couple of years, you know, they, they started highly recommending me coaching, you know, and it was something I already started thinking about and it happened. And, you know, again, I look back on it and I'm thankful for that, you know, just for that support because I definitely wouldn't have been able to do it alone, you know, so definitely, uh, again, grateful for that whole time period. That's awesome, man. It really sounds like you really do have some amazing people around you because uh, you seem to have your, you know, your head on straight, man. It's, it's nice to hear that because um, it does take a lot to overcome something like that. And, you know, being an athlete and I've seen guys not be able to recover from that, even even when it's not just an injury, just when football ends for them, just not being able to recover, you know, um, which is hard even in itself. You know, when you're thinking I'm going to make it to the NFL, even guys that get through all four years and then it's like, dang, now, now what, you know, like I mm -hmm. thought I was going to make it. And it's just like, it hits hard, you know? So to have that support system, man, uh, uh, that's, that's amazing, man. Cause it really does seem like, you know, you have your head on straight. Um, now, once you did transition as a, a, a coach, um, do you remember what it was like that first time that transition for you, like getting into become going from player to coach? Yeah, that that was an interesting time just because when I first started, you know, I would, like there was players I came into college with who were still on the team at Arizona because that's where I started as I was finishing school. So um, when I was doing that, I was looking around and there was, you know, guys who were in their senior year or their redshirt junior year. And, you know, I'm wearing a, you know, a ball cap and have a clipboard and I'm charting plays and those guys are like running around, you know, playing and, and at first it was really tough because I was looking around and I was like I should be out there with them and I was going through that whole thing and that part was tough and then I, I had to remind myself you know that like that was just the you know I had to get through that to get to coaching you know what I mean that that was going to be the toughest part was just seeing that and you know even the games were tough you know I'd see them you know leave the tunnel and I was just like you know man I should be out there and after a while I stopped thinking like that I was like no I shouldn't be out there I should be right where I'm at right now so um, that, that was a fun and exciting time. And I got to start as a junior and a senior in college and then, uh, got hired at Arizona once I graduated. So, uh, was there for a while, um, uh, and still keep in contact with a lot of those players, coaches till this day. So, uh, it was, it was an exciting time and I'm, I'm thankful for the start of it. I'm thankful for the finish of it there too, because, you know, it, it all, carries beneficial weight to me as I, you know, move forward with my career. That's awesome, man. And then, and then when you're talking about moving forward with your career, I know it's a uh, pretty exciting. Uh, you are now an SDSU uh, coach. Um, what was that like once you, you know, realized like, dang, I'm about to be coaching at, you know, San Diego state, you know, in, in my city now, what was that like for you? Yeah, it, it all kind of happened randomly. Um, it, it's, it happened really fast, but I'm super excited and super thankful to be here. And the biggest reason is obviously I'm able to be home and I'm able to be close to family and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm close enough to now where my mom can bother me a little more, but you know, <laughs> the cool thing is, you know, uh, the, the staff here is great. Um, it's, they're, they're all obviously really good coaches, but I, I really feel like I'm surrounded by good people right now. And it starts at the top with coach Hoke and, you know, I think, you know, so far, obviously, we've got to keep doing what we're doing one game at a time. But I think a lot of our success, um, no question, has to do with the players. But he, he's hired some really good people here um, who just happen to be good coaches. And, and from that standpoint, the you know, everything's working out. And for me, again, it's nice to be home, but I, I really feel like I'm becoming a better coach. And, uh, you know, seeing it, it's been real refreshing here, just being around the staff who I'm around and, uh I never, you know, I, I always thought it'd be cool to come home, uh, coach at San Diego State, but I didn't expect it to ha happen uh, at the time it did and, and the way it did. So happy to be here. And I'm just, you know, hoping to continue to build off of, you know, kind of what we've done so far. 
That's cool, man. It's uh, exciting, you know, because there's a, a good amount of guys from San Diego on the coaching staff. So that's very exciting. Uh, you know, being a, a, a kid from San Diego as well, you know, we kind of grew up thinking like, hey, is, is there it's not really too many guys from San Diego recruiting in San Diego. But now it's like the staff seems to be a, a good collect uh, guys from San Diego. And it seems like you guys are actually bringing in a lot of San Diego athletes and um you guys are doing an amazing job, man. Uh, what about what about for the future uh, for you? What are some future goals, uh, if you don't mind sharing with us, that uh, you have for yourself? Yeah, well, coaching is this is what I want to do. So you know, every, you know, every day I think up, I wake up and I got to remind myself that I'm thankful to be doing what I want to do. And uh, you know, the reality of it is. Uh, you know, college coaching is so unpredictable, you know, it's just the reality of it. So, you know, for me right now, it's just doing my best to, you know, stay where my feet are at, uh, just show up to work every day and just take things one day at a time. Um, but, you know, obviously my future plans are, you know, I want to, I just want to see where this thing takes me and, you know, just do the best at, at, you know, what I'm asked to do right now. You know, I, I think it's good to have goals. You know, I think it's easy to say, you know, I want to be a coordinator or a head coach one day. And I, I think most people want to be that. So I think for me, you know, I just want to do the best at what I'm asked to do right now. And I think when you do that, that's when, you know, other opportunities over time start to start to happen. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. And, and, you know, I'm just trying to enjoy where I'm at. And, and I'm excited for, uh, the rest of this season I'm just excited you know for you know the rest of my career as well just because you know it's, it's I look back and just even the past three years just went by so fast so I'm just and, and there's, there's been so many changes just within those months you know to years and so I'm, I'm trying my best to just stay in the moment enjoy this and, and you know ultimately see where it goes from there. Man, well, we're definitely rooting for you, man, because uh, that's awesome to hear. It's, it's nice to hear of a San Diego guy overcoming your obstacles, living out your dreams and being able to, you know, make something bigger yourself. And, and it, nothing better than having you back in San Diego. That's for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, with that, man, would you have any advice for some of these young guys coming out of high school, you know, following your footsteps, chasing that D1 dream? Yeah, the biggest thing I would say is, you know, just you have to identify, you know, in my opinion, you know, you have to whoever there's always somebody who supports you right and and you always want to identify those people who support you and who are there for you as as a person before an athlete and I think because those are the people who really have your back and then I learned that in 19 you know I think it's it's easy to have a bunch of support when things are going good for you uh athletically um and as a kid you know as a kid you know you, you're not able to really see that but you know, a lot of times it's family, you know, and they might not know everything and, and understand everything. But uh, I would just say, keep those people who really trust you and really believe in you as a person, keep those people close, because when it's all said and done, those are the people, you know, you're going to you're going to lean on for some type of support uh, in the future, you know, when you face some type of adversity. So those are the things I, I would advise kids to do and stay in the moment and, you know, enjoy it. You know, and that's you know, I think that's a big thing, too, because. I was that kid once where there was always some some older guy saying, you know, it goes by fast. And, you know, now I'm saying the same thing to kids. And I'm just like, I wish they listened to me. But I was that kid, too, who wasn't listening when they said it neither. So I, I would just say that, enjoy it, and then just keep those people who really trust you and support you really close to you. Man, well, there you have it. From the man, the myth, the legend, Pierre, man, really appreciate your time. Hey, good luck this week against Hawaii. Um, and we'll definitely be rooting for you, man. Hopefully we can have you back sometime. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. For sure, man. We well, have a good one. Good luck, coach. You too. Thank All you. Right.